I'd like to welcome everybody to our webinar this evening. I'm Pam Gothart, Professional Learning Director for Social Studies School Service. We're always delighted to have you join and uh, those of you that like to watch after it's been posted to YouTube, we appreciate you guys coming on and watching there as well. Today we do have Dr. Jana Kirchner with you with us and if you have heard me introduce her before, you know that she is one of my favorite presenters. I love uh, getting to work with Dr. Kirchner, who has just uh, recently published a second book. Jana might want to share that with you today. But uh, Jana, we're just so glad that you could join in this afternoon and share with us a little bit more about uh, working with our English language learners. And we're glad that you who have tuned in uh, are joining as well. I'm going to mute myself and turn it over to you, Jana. Thanks, Pam. I'm excited to be with you, and uh, thanks everybody for joining us. And tonight, our webinar is going to be about building context for students who are English language learners. Just to give you a little background about me, um, I am a former high school social studies and English teacher who has taught at the university level, who's worked with Teaching American History grants, and um, been an instructional supervisor for a school district. So come with a lot of different experiences and now I'm really enjoying working with Social Studies School Service on a variety of projects in Active Classroom, which I love to talk about. So what we're going to talk about tonight is some ways that we can use Active Classroom resources to help build um, context and understanding for our English language learners. So we're going to start off with a question. What are some barriers to learning for English language learners? And as we pro progress with the webinar tonight, I want you to think about those students that you work with, what are some of their challenges they bring to the classroom. I put this up before we started, so I have a couple of um, responses already on the chat feature, but please, if you think of anything else, please respond to that. So some of the comments that came in were difficulty communicating what they already know and understand, limited background information, great response, need extended time to process verbal and written information. I think those would be common ideas that uh, teachers, no matter what content or what grade level you teach, would express. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at some strategies for um, helping English language learners and how we can use active classroom resources to be able to um, in, reinforce those strategies or develop those strategies. So we're gonna look at five different strategies. And I'll be real honest with you, these are not anything new and profound. These are research-based good practice strategies that have been around for a very long time. But I think as we, um, as teachers plan day-to-day -day units and lessons, sometimes it's good just to be reminded of what we know are good practice strategies and then think about them intentionally as we plan. And then from social studies school services point of view, how can active classroom help you um, implement those strategies and reinforce learning for our English language learners? So that's where we're headed in our webinar. At any time, if you have a question or comment or you wanna share an idea, please feel free to type that in the chat feature. So let's get started. One of our strategies is um, to use visuals to build background knowledge. We said one of our barriers was sometimes there's just not background knowledge or context to be under to be able to understand content. And so this seems pretty simplistic, but I, some, I sometimes think we forget in the craziness of school that it always helps to start with visuals anytime you can. So those visuals could be maps, pictures, videos, timelines, paintings any type of thing to build some background knowledge or in literacy world, we call it activate schema the, to promote what's there, make connections to previous learning. So for instance, in the pictures, you see um, young students circling continents and working with the concepts of continent versus country because those um, vocabulary words were a little tricky. On the right, you see a gallery walk and that was before a novel about Nigeria and to build some context about the place. There were pictures around the room so students could get an idea in their head what the place looked like before they actually went to the written text. So let me show you some examples in Active Classroom. And what I'm gonna show you is a lot of screenshots and you will always see 
in the side or at the top where the lesson is, what series it came from. So if you want to look that up or explore that resources in the Active Classroom, I'll always give you the uh, source for it on the side. So this comes from Hungry Planet and Material World. And if we're going to do, pretend we're in a geography class and we're going to study Molly, what the people are like, what they eat, what their day-to-day -day life is like. Well, most students, and, and specifically English language learners, may not have a concept of where Molly is. So anytime you can start with a map to give them some context of the place. Screens? There we go. I also think this is a strategy. It's one of my favorites, and I show it almost every time I work with teachers, and that is I notice, I wonder. It is a quick, easy strategy to use with any type of visuals before you start a unit or before you start having students go to a text. And you could have a handout version of it. You could have them draw a line in their notes. And then anytime you show a visual, you have them write down what they notice on the left side and what they wonder about. So some questions they have on the right side. So we're going to show you what this might look like in our little geography lesson on Molly. So this is actually a picture from Material World of a family and all their household possessions spread out around the house. So this type of image, this photo, would be a great way to use, I notice, I wonder, where students could write down all the things they notice. You might even want to partner them with someone so they can talk about it, practice using their words and practice speaking with a peer. And then have them write questions on the side on the right hand column, what do they wonder about? So they're generating some of their own questions before you go to a written text. So this is a written text, it's an active classroom, it's just an interesting facts reading. So before you actually expose them to the words, they've already built a little bit of context through knowing where Molly is on the map. And they built a little bit of context through seeing what a family and all the family's possessions might be. And then they generated some of their own questions so they could read with a purpose. They're gonna read trying to find answers to their own questions. So a quick, easy way to build some background knowledge, activate some schema before you go to written words. Another example that might work in a world history class. This would be a great intro visual map to use for an age of exploration unit, for instance, where you might put this up or you might have students look at a copy of this at their desk and try to get figure out what the arrows mean and where the places are and what it's trying to say about all those different products and have a conversation around that visual before you have them do any reading or looking at videos or you discuss the age of exploration so they have built some background knowledge by examining this visual first another example paintings are wonderful ways to build some background knowledge and, and build some context for students before you start this one is a famous one lots of people use for a westward expansion unit in U.S. history and you can see there's so many different parts of this that you might just you might use that I notice I wonder or you may just have a class discussion of what do you see in this painting they may not know what all the parts are and it may take some prompting they may not know who the lady is or what she represents but you could definitely encourage them to get lots of the different parts the train and the buffalo and then have them sort of predict what do you think we're going to read about or what do you think we're going to learn with Western expansion. So again, you're using a visual to build some background knowledge before you go to any type of written text. They already have that schema built. Another strategy, and, and this seems sort of common sense, but I think sometimes it's good to put this back in front of us as teachers again, is always have a clear purpose for your lessons and use active reading strategies. So let's talk about what that means. So as you, we, we produce lessons and we imp them, implement lessons at such a fast pace that sometimes we forget in the midst of that, what is it we really wanna accomplish in this lesson? Is this to work on reading skills? For instance, do you want them to work on sequencing or do you want them to work on picking out main ideas or cause and effect? Or is this just a simple text you're going to use because you need to have some background knowledge of the content before you do the activity the next day? So what is it this purpose of this lesson or the purpose of this text that we're going to use is? So part of that is figuring that out yourself as a teacher and then being very intentional and very clear about explaining that purpose to students. 
that can look a lot of different ways. I know every, every school, every principal wants it a different thing. It could be you have learning targets or your school wants goals or your school wants essential questions on your units. Whatever format you have that in, make it very clear to students what the purpose is for the lesson. What are they expected to know and do by the end of this lesson? And if nothing else, that, that um, kind of creates a culture and climate where they understand their expectations and what it's going to take to get there. So it could be simply, why are we reading this text? We're reading this text because we are looking for answers to why Americans went west. Or we are reading this text because we want to see what causes of the war were. See if we can find out any clues about that. Or what are we supposed to be learning from the video? I confess, I'm, I'm not sure I always did that very well sometimes with videos, but what do, you, what do you want them to look for or listen for? So be intentional about what your purpose is for students. Are they gonna work on a skill and a content piece? Just a skill, make that very clear. And always, always with all kids, but especially students who are English language learners that struggle with the language, always practice active reading strategies. There are lots of ways to do that, lots of examples of that online, but some of my favorites and ones that work great in active classroom are highlighting, annotating, so that the students get used to interacting with text. And I've heard teachers explain this to students as I want to see your thinking and how you interact with text. And I can only do that if I see underlines or if I see notes in the margin or question marks. So I know that you are actively processing what you're reading. A colleague of mine um, sometimes says if you can get in the habit of any time you make an assignment that involves reading, say read and. And I thought that was a great way of thinking about this. Are you going to read and highlight main ideas? Are you going to read and discuss a summary with the partner? But she said, if you get in the habit of always making your assignments where they read and do something, that will intentionally get you thinking about what are active reading strategies. So what does that look like in active classroom? So several different lessons and series in active classroom have those big ideas, our purposes built in. So anytime you see the screen, I always try to put circle up here, the series so you, or the lessons, so you could see where I'm pulling this from in the screenshot and also some of the resources down the side. But this one is a Texas studies lesson, for instance, on Civil War and Reconstruction. And notice it automatically has the big ideas built into it. So all these different readings or text would flush out these four big idea questions. And if students had those posted in the room or posted on a handout and they were always reading or watching a video or looking at a map for clues to understand those questions, that helps their comprehension of content. So several series in Active Classroom have that built in. The videos in Active Classroom, for instance, and I put the source over here, this is one in government. Um, always prompt students to look for the main idea and three and three details to support that idea. So that's a great way to cue students to what skills they're working on. So not only are they looking for content, but they're working on picking out main ideas and three details. It could be even that you practice that with them. You show a little bit of the video, you stop and you say, what do you think was the main idea in this? I think it's this and you think out loud with them. Here's how I got that. And you may need to practice that skill a little bit. Um, in Active Classroom, and you, um, you can highlight and annotate digitally. Also, you can print any of these out and use um, highlighters, pencils, pens, all of that will work just fine. But I'm going to show you, if you're not familiar with this, the highlighting annotating tool in Active Classroom. This is a Power Basic series, which is um, a wonderful series for English language learners. If you have not explored that, it's written on a fifth or sixth grade level and it's content for most U.S. history, geography, world history topics short um, passages with uh, comprehension checks built in. But in any of the readings in Active Classroom, you can use the highlighting and annotating tool, which is here. And I'm going to show you this on screenshots. So students can highlight or annotate. In this particular one, I custom 
designed the highlights because I wanted them to look for ex um, examples that answered their I wonder questions and then examples of just important ideas. So students can highlight in different colors. The annotations will show on the side. Teachers can um, comment on student annotations. Again, these are just screenshots. And if you need help with this, there's a help page in Active Classroom that can show you how to do all these. You can customize the assignments. This is what I did on that one. So these four uh, assignment highlights are built into Active Classroom automatically, but you can make your own if you want them to answer their I wonder questions. You could choose the color and you can choose the highlight and set that up yourself. So remember, all of these are ways to get students to practice active reading and interact with the text in a variety of ways. That's just an example of what my um, customized highlight looks like there. Okay, another strategy is to always teach and reinforce content vocabulary throughout your lessons. There are several examples in Active Classroom, um, several series that automatically have words to know built in. And if you notice, they are provided at the beginning of the lesson and the definitions are provided. So you might wanna work with those, practice with those. I've even seen teachers use these and they had students uh, draw a visual to represent some of the key ideas before they went to the text. So they made sure the students understood those vocabulary words. And then they are constantly reinforced throughout the reading. You'll see those in bright colors. Um, graphic organizers are provided to help with vocabulary and a lot of these. So just be real intentional about teaching and then reinforcing those vocabulary words, especially things that are proper nouns or uh, social studies words that you see frequently. Make sure you reinforce them as they find them in the text. So when texts are complex, um, it is good practice to chunk them into smaller sections and built in frequent comprehension checks and those are strategies that work no matter what your text is as we know primary sources a lot of times are difficult for all students but for english language learners especially but also secondary sources sometimes just have are wordy and complicated so it's always a good practice to chunk it into smaller parts so if there's a, a big uh, page of multiple paragraphs for instance chunk it into paragraph sections and have students uh, maybe model the, or you maybe model the first paragraph together, think out loud what you do when you read and when you highlight and annotate, and then stop and talk about it. And then maybe take the second chunk of text and have students do what you just did and then stop and talk about the content in that section with the peer. So build in frequent formative assessments and frequent opportunities for students to talk to each other whether you call that turn and talk or elbow partners, let them practice picking out main ideas and practice summarizing because that's a skill that will reinforce that reading comprehension. But also in a safe space, maybe talking to a partner is easier than talking to a whole class. They get to practice those speaking language skills that we wanna work on with English language learners as well. So some series in Active Classroom um, that are organized around chunks, short chunks of checks. If you haven't looked at short text, those, if you notice, there's a part one and a part two. And notice there almost always is a teacher's guide that gives you instructions for implementing in a variety of ways to implement this. Um, several of the teacher's guides have differentiation tips built in. So check out short text if you haven't looked at that. Frequent comprehension checks are built in, especially in series like Power Basics, to make sure they understood the content. In an active classroom, if it's a uh, true, false, multiple choice, it will automatically score those for you. So that saves time there for teachers. And using scaffolds as needed. This is one of my favorite graphics I have to tell you at the bottom because I think it says so much in just a visual in that if we have a goal and here's where you want students to be. We have some students, quite honestly, that have already mastered that goal and are ready for something before we even started our unit. And then we have other students who need those uh, supports and scaffolds built in until their skills are independent. And I think that I wanted to put that in here because it's as needed. We eventually want to pull those scaffolds and supports out as the independent skills develop. 
But some ways to do that is text at different Lexile levels, include graphic organizers as needed to help with organizing content and also content mastery, use translations in native languages as needed, and then model your thinking. What do you do when you get to vocabulary that you don't understand? Or how do you do context clues? Um, gradual release is a strategy, sometimes called direct instruction or workshop model. That's an I do, we do, you do. So you might model a paragraph and think out loud and highlight and annotate. And then they work with a partner to do the second paragraph. And then they try to do the third paragraph independently. Lots of examples of how to do that gradual release uh, online if you're interested in more information. So what does that look like in Active Classroom? Well, Active Classroom has Lexile levels built in on the readings. There are a variety of lessons, and you can see the examples at the bottom that have differentiation tips and ways to reinforce skills and graphic organizers automatically built in, so you don't have to create those. And one of my favorite parts is the text-to-speech toolbar. And if you are not familiar with this and you have English language learners, you go to the top to the little what I think is a speaker, you click there and a text-to-speech toolbar pops up and it will read aloud to students, it will translate, it will define words and give picture definitions of words. So what that looks like in my exploring world history text, if I'm having students read about ancient Greece, this is my text. I would highlight a paragraph and I would go to translate and this is what would pop down, and I have mine set for Spanish. You could have it read aloud by clicking here. I could highlight a word, merchants, and it would define it, give me a picture of it by using these little icons. And you can set the languages, and students can set the languages here with a little setting wheel, and it has a drop down menu with 14 different languages. So when students need that support for a translation in their own language, that's built into Active Classroom automatically. So putting it all together. So everything I've said is, is um, kind of research-based. It's been around a long time. It's being intentional and thinking about it and planning it. So I'm gonna think out loud as if I were a seventh grade world history teacher in, in Kentucky, that's in seventh grade. And I'm going to talk about the fall of Rome. That's my content. And I want to use a decision making lesson because I like how those built in have built in student talk automatically. And we're in decision making in medieval history. Well, I know several things I need to think about as I build in that lesson that I need to build some background knowledge and some vocabulary. So I may start out by talking about what does it take to be a good leader at that time in history? We're talking about the 400 CE period, and that's ancient history for all of us. Um, I may need to review some vocabulary and show that on the map. Well, I know this particular series has differentiated levels of the problem, and so I'm going to give the problem for my English language learners probably at level one, and we're going to be, they're going to be the Roman Emperor Diocletian, and they're going to have to decide what to do about national security. So then I probably, when I give them the problem, it still may have some complex words, so I may use some scaffolding to and model a paragraph out loud and show them how I highlight main ideas because we're going to have to know a little bit about him to be able to make a decision. And so then I would let them do it. So read the problem and annotate um, some main ideas of what Diocletian, what he was dealing with in solving this problem. And then I would let them talk with the partner or their small group and try to figure out what decision they want to make about national security for ancient Rome and then make that decision and defend it. So that would be a comprehension check as a teacher. I could tell if they understood that content. So notice, notice just planning through that what might just be a one day lesson or even a two day lesson at the most. I intentionally try to think about all those things that I could do to build context and build understanding for those English language learners. So let's show you what it looks like. So that particular lesson has vocabulary that I could work with. I could show them the map and show them where Rome was and explain this barbarian threat. We could talk about that and maybe that, that 
waters were waterways were important. We could talk about that map quite a bit and get some context before we go to the text. And then if you notice, this is level one, and here's what here's our question. Here's a timeline if we need some more reinforcement. And then I might just model the first paragraph or first two paragraphs here aloud and say, I'm going to highlight as I read out loud what the most important ideas are I think that Diocletian needs to know about. Model that out loud, then they could read the rest of it and talk to a partner. And they make their decision. What are they going to do about national security? And they have two choices in this particular one. And they've got to explain reasons for their choices. So as a teacher, that's your comprehension check. And that's their turn and talk with a partner and try to make sure they understand the content. So if you notice, we did all those things in a quick summary version in just that one particular lesson. So I think it's partly as we kind of wrap this up, it's partly thinking intentionally, what are those good practice research-based skills and how do I think about how I intentionally plan them in my lessons and units? So any questions or comments or teaching ideas that you have that you would like to share, please feel free to type in the chat box. Loved it. And you know what you shared with us here was great for those English language learners, but it was also to me perfect for students who are just uh, below grade level readers in general who mm -hmm. you know may be dyslexic or have other uh, reading difficulties. Yes, absolutely. Anyone else have a comment or question for Jana? Please do put that in your chat feature. She'll be glad to take that for you. At the end of today, when you're closing out, please take the little short survey that pops up. And also tomorrow, I will be emailing all of you the link for today's webinar so that you can go back and view it again or share it with your colleagues. We always appreciate you sharing that uh, with others. Jana, thanks so much for being with us today. It was a pleasure as always and an exciting uh, opportunity. I really appreciated all the visuals. I'm a very visual learner, so I appreciated all the visuals of how to make great. that work. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.